The Christian Andriacchio case was prematurely closed by authorities, but many questions remain. Come behind the curtain and follow private investigator Sheila Waisaki as she uncovers the truth about what happened to Christian. This is Without Warning. Ray Andriacchio is Christian Andriacchio's mother. An open letter to the people who hold the fate of my son in their hands. When a parent loses a child, their world stops. It is the closest thing to experiencing your own death while still living and breathing. But you are living and breathing, and you do still have other children and other responsibilities, so you carry on. And as time goes by and people move on to another tragedy, or celebrate their own milestones, you continue to tread water, half of the time wishing you would drown and the other half of the time feeling guilty that you don't. And time keeps growing by, time that can heal most wounds, but not all. The only thing worse for a parent than the death of a child is the death of a child by violence, a totally avoidable tragedy if the person who killed your child had what? Made better choices, had better parents, not been on drugs, been a nicer person? At the end of the day, it comes down to a person deciding that your child's life was less important than theirs. Their child's life was less important than what they stood to gain. They say when you have a child die that you join the club that no one wants to be a member of. When you have a child murdered, you become a member of a club that is much smaller and comes with its own unique challenges. One challenge that I did not expect and should not have expected was the fight to find justice for my child. It has been a long three years, three years filled with sadness, overwhelming grief, frustration, disbelief, disillusionment, and anger. Prior to my son's death, I never had much interaction with law enforcement. I thought all was right with the world overall. Ironic enough, I voted for some of the people who later would betray me. I foolishly thought most people are inherently good and would do the right thing. People who I had helped many times when they were in crisis would later show me their true character. It is a different type of betrayal when people who you are raised your entire life to respect and follow their rules does not give you the same courtesy or even empathy when you need that the most. Over the past three years, there has been frequent interaction with local and state law enforcement. The interactions have been widespread and range of personalities displayed. Some have been apathetic and disinterested, not taking the time to put themselves in my position and thinking, what if this was my child? Others have truly appeared to be concerned, but have been stifled by those who want to maintain the status quo of, if I don't ask, I don't have to tell mentality. And then there are those who just didn't bother to return a phone call because what would they say? They couldn't tell the truth. That would be bad for so many people. So they just didn't call, feeling this made them less culpable. But of all those people, the worst were those two or three that smiled sadly, patted your hand, and told you as they led you out of their office that they were going to take care of everything. And then as soon as you left, they were planning ways to keep justice from happening. Dishonest people, people with no conscience, people who were not much better than the criminals they were sometimes incarcerating when they deemed fit. Not when a jury reached a judgment, but when they reached their judgment. Not caring that they were playing with the emotions of not one person, but an entire family of grieving souls. Not caring that we could reach an almost euphoric high when we received a phone call of hope, but could come crashing down to the lowest low a day later when they did not follow through with what they had promised. This roller coaster of emotions that was only made worse by the incessant waiting and waiting and more waiting. Three years almost to the day of my son's death, we were given the news that warrants had been signed for individuals to be arrested for charges of murder. Finally, justice would be served. Finally, people had done their job. Finally, the waiting was over. But the waiting wasn't over. We waited one day and then two. We waited one week, which rolled into another and still no arrest. Today, we decided the waiting was over. We could not sit by any longer and hope that people would do the right thing. Hope that this did not happen to another person's child. Hope that somehow justice would prevail. We know these seven or eight individuals do not encapsulate or set the standard for all law enforcement. 
I know there are many wonderful, dedicated people who put their life on the line every day they work for the safety of others. I am friends with several officers who are dedicated to their job. Unfortunately, those people were not investigating my son's case. Those people were not in positions of authority to make a difference in my son's case. My son's name is Christian Shane Andriacchio. He was 21 years old when he was murdered by individuals for financial gain. These individuals were unemployed, uneducated, and unwilling to follow society's laws. They felt Christian was worth more to them dead than alive. They have been identified by MPD. Affidavits were convincing enough for the judge to initially sign warrants for manslaughter and then three days later upgrade it to murder. But now those warrants sit on the investigator's desk. No action taken even though they readily admit Christian was murdered. I do not like posting on Facebook, but I feel this is the only avenue left to us to have the largest impact. Today, I asked you to put yourself in my position. Do what the Meridian Police Department and the DA has not done and think of someone other than what is in their best interest. Share this on your social media. Ask people to call Chief Dubose at MPD or email him at bennydubose at meridianms.org and demand these warrants be carried out. Call Mayor Bland or email at percybland at meridianms.org and demand the investigators involved carry out their duties to protect and serve. This is an election year. The chief of police is in an appointed position by the mayor. I would ask Christian's family and friends to share this post to their extended family and friends and encourage them to call and post about the corruption these actions by MPD implies. If you have any family or friends who know or work with any politicians or business leaders in any part of the state or federal government who they feel could help with our fight to have these individuals arrested, please contact me. If you know anyone in any media outlet, please forward this to them. Christian's story needs to be told. Meridian is the sixth largest city in the state of Mississippi. The population is approximately 38,000. It's located in the East Central Hills region of Mississippi in Lauderdale County. The area surrounding the city is covered with oak and pine forests. It's 93 miles east of Jackson, Mississippi, 154 miles southwest of Birmingham, Alabama and 202 miles northeast of New Orleans, Louisiana. And that's where our story begins. Christian had worked for Magnolia Marine for ever since he was 18 years old. He worked on the Catherine Berry, which was the name of his towboat. He would make the route from below Baton Rouge, Louisiana, up to the other side of Chicago, hauling asphalt. It was like liquid asphalt. And when he was contacted by Dylan stating that Whitley was riding around with someone in his car, he was around the New Orleans area. And so he made arrangements for Dylan to pick him up on the shore somewhere close to St. Rose, Louisiana, which was I think, on the outskirts of New Orleans. From 2009 to 2014, the Meridian Police Department was headed by Police Chief Lee Salburn, referred to as Chief Lee. On February 26, 2014, Christian Andriacchio was murdered. And on June 3rd, 2014, Benny DeBose was elected to chief of police and replaced Chief Lee. The Meridian Police Department consists of 115 full-time officers, but also has part-time and reserve staff available. Its Criminal Investigations Division responded to 4,000 cases, 2,000 of which were felonies. Yet, it has been described as, quote, the safest city in Mississippi with more than 30,000 people. The only daily newspaper printed in the city is the Meridian Star, which has been in operation since 1898. Throughout the five and a half years, we've had difficulty getting media coverage for Christian's case. The Meridian Star never covered anything on Christian's case. They didn't even cover his death. The only time that they mentioned his case was when his case was no bill by the grand jury, which would have been in November of 2017. They recently covered Cassie Coleman's official statement from the DA's office where she was commenting on Christian's case and how her office had handled it. 
the Marine Star did contact me for a comment, but they only gave me one sentence in the whole write-up, which was pretty much promoting Cassie. And this has been pretty true to course for the Meridian Star. They typically do not cover any negative press for elected officials or the police department. Last fall, I received a call from Dennis Cooper, the producer and narrator of the podcast Culpable. He wanted my help on a case he had been following for a year, asking me to help with mistaken suicide. The way so many of my cases begin, I declined because of my schedule. I've been working on a story recently, and I want to tell you about this, but I'm sure you're super busy. I was knee-deep working on another investigation while also starting up my own podcast focusing on the Lauren Agee case. But when I spoke to Ray Christian's mom, I knew I had to help. So this season on Without Warning, I'm going to take you step-by-step through my investigation of this case and deep dive into the lives of those involved. We will talk to experts, listeners, and hopefully new evidence will come to light. This season on Without Warning, we will be the voice for Christian. Without Warning, Executive Director, Executive Producer, and Host, Sheila Wysocki. Producer, Aaron Parker. Mix and Mastering by Resonant Recording. And Announcer, Tim Evans. Christian's family gives their full permission for any and all details to be shared and hope that the truth will come out. If you know anything at all, call 1-888-599-0008 or email tips at sheilawysaki.com.